You are what you eat. My mom relentlessly drilled this eat healthy mantra into me since childhood. At first, I found the whole idea strange, as I had a tendency to eat everything indiscriminately. I had adopted the simplistic mindset. If it tastes good, well, it must be good food. So when my mom started banning all my beloved delicacies, it was an absolute nightmare. Crispy chips, sweet candies, fatty burgers, delicious chocolate, mouth-watering fried goodness. It was like lunchtime had become detention. And then my mom introduced us to organic food. All I can think of was, oh boy, more restrictions. True to my expectations, it was hard in the beginning, extremely hard. Even so, naturally over time, it became part of my routine. But I was never truly on board until a few years ago. On March of 2011, the Tohoku earthquake triggered powerful tsunami waves that caused tremendous damage on, to Japan. But amongst the reports of disaster and tragedy was the wondrous story of Suna Kimura. The 83-year-old Japanese rice farmer had miraculously escaped the massive tsunami on a bicycle. I couldn't believe it. How did this elderly woman manage to complete such a feat? And then I heard the magic words, organic food. That was when it hit me. Organic food is a key. But to what exactly? This is what we'll be exploring today, ladies and gentlemen, the benefits of organic food. The concept of organic is not a foreign one. Everyone has heard it at least a few times, especially now that the organic industry is on the rise. But surprisingly, it's still commonly misunderstood. Organic itself means of living origins. Organic food is food that has been naturally grown and processed. This means there is no synthetic inputs from the planting of the crops till the distribution. In order for foods to be marketed as organic, they must abide by what's known as the organic standard. These vary in different countries. For example, in the US, it's regulated by the US Department of Agriculture, hence the commonly seen label. However, it's standardized by the international body called IFOAM. This limits the chemicals that can be used on a restricted basis. It's also what sets apart the organic certification from the natural label. The organic certification means the product meets the USDA organic standard and, as, and is at least 95% organically produced. On the other hand, the natural label is more ambiguous and isn't government regulated, except for their meat and poultry, which still doesn't indicate anything for their treatment of animals. But at the end of the day, there is still that lingering question. So what? Organic is bona fide natural. What's wrong with the food we eat now? Why should we eat organic food? The answer is rather simple, because now, we know better. See, the world had become filled with these toxic chemical residues that find its way into the food we eat. It began as early as the Industrial Revolution. Our advancements in farming, though sweet, came with a steep price. Without really realizing the impact of our technological innovations, we kept progressing and progressing. Farmers learned that they didn't have to rely on nature to take its course. Chemicals can kill pests and stimulate crop growth. It was a whole new game. Meanwhile, they were inadvertently releasing harmful substances into the environment. Then, there were the destructive advancements we made in war weaponry. The Vietnam War itself introduced Agent Orange into the land, one of the combinations used by the US military as part of its chemical warfare program. Millions of gallons of it were sprayed on vegetation and trees. Exposure meant death, cancer, or other chronic diseases. Not only did Vietnam estimated 500,000 people were killed or maimed, but 400,000 children were born with birth defects. The long-term effects of these chemical usage on the environment are even more horrifying. It seeped into the soil and vegetation of the land, polluting the resources and thus contaminating the food grown from it. These chemicals pushed its way into the food chain. And on top of that, non-organic farming allows approximately 450 chemicals to be used during their process. This means that conventional food has been exposed to even more chemicals. But it doesn't end there. Continued use of synthetic fertilizers and pesticides results in the land's nutrients becoming increasingly depleted and pests developing resistance to the pesticides. This means that even more, even more synthetic fertilizers and pesticides are needed to get the same crop yield. 
So the chemical usage just keeps piling up. Think about that for a second. All the harmful chemicals in the equation, this is what makes up our daily diet. With organic food, the strict standards limit the chemical use and require crops to be grown on land which has been freed of prohibited substances for at least three years. Consuming it limits your exposure to numerous toxic substances. What makes organic food so healthy is what it lacks, the toxic exposure. It's all just natural, the way it's supposed to be, really. But with that one lack, organic food provides an array of benefits. Biologically, organic food is extremely positive. For example, eating organic equals healthy genes. A little biology recap. DNA is a blueprint for our body's proteins, whereby specific area code for specific proteins. These parts are called genes. Now, when DNA structure is damaged, we can't create the right types or amounts of proteins that our body needs to function properly. Unfortunately, this is exactly what food contaminants or interconventional foods do. These genotoxins or toxic substances that harm our genes are so common within our food products, most of us consume them on a daily basis. One of them, benzoyl peroxide, which is used as a bleaching agent for wheat flour, can actually cause DNA strands to cross-link, resulting in the wrong proteins being made, which just shows how the tiniest glitches can cause unimaginable damage to the human body. However, many genotoxins are prohibited in organic farming. There are a handful of harmful substances we can avoid by eating organic food. For one, we can avoid consuming harmful metals like lead and mercury, which can, which can contaminate food through machinery during food production. In fact, despite known harmful effects, lead residues can still be found in most foods, particularly canned goods. Even small consumptions of lead, especially in children, can cause impaired neurobehavioral development, decreased stature and growth, and impaired hearing. Even scarier, both the whites and yolks of eggs can absorb the chemicals consumed by the chicken. The mostly protein whites, uh, whites absorb heavy metals like mercury, while the mostly fat yolks absorb fat-soluble pesticides. Even the fruits we eat to be healthy have, have been synthetically altered. To maintain their appealing physical appearance, some fruits like pears and apples are wax. Other fruits like bananas and oranges may have been spread, sprayed with ethylene gas to induce ripening process. And these are the foods we eat every day. We have only begun scraping the surface of what these chemicals can do to us. With organic food, these harmful components won't be in the equation, and food will be a form of nourishment again instead of our daily dosage of toxin. Furthermore, because of what organic farming involves, it also benefits the environment. Modern intensive agriculture utilizes a chemical dependent model of agribusiness, AKA they wanna make as much money as possible. Needless to say, the constant use of this model damages the Earth's environment. Organic farming works on a completely different platform. It works with nature instead of trying to maximize profit by working against it. But this isn't to say that organic farming reverts back to the ancient traditional methods of farming or let nature to simply take over. No, organic farming uses modern scientific knowledge to maintain a healthy balance between nature and farming. A common practice in organic farming is crop rotation. Crop rotation is when different types of crop families are rotated to various areas of land every few years to allow the original site to rejuvenate its nutrients. This achieves the same as um, synthetic fertilizers and leads to long-term soil fertility as well. In addressing problematic pests, organic farming works to not completely eradicate pests, but keep them down at a low and acceptable level. One of the methods used is by maintaining the natural balance between predators and pests. With this harmony, pests will cease to be problematic, making pesticides unnecessary. Another important aspect of organic farming is unlike conventional farming, it follows a strict standard to treatment of livestock. In addition to the fact that organically raised poultry and lean meat are not exposed to antibiotics and growth hormones, they're also raised in a more humane and less stressful environment. Appropriate living conditions must be met, including that the animals are not confined within small space, spaces where, where they cannot naturally move. Organic animals are only to be fed organic feed. 
and never receive animal slaughter byproducts, which are basically processed feed made of unused parts of other slaughtered animals. This is vital for the animal's health, as it can lead to problems like mad cow disease and hoof and mouth disease. Their health and welfare is priority. I know that most people are hesitant towards the cost because, well, going organic is expensive. And I don't expect any one of you to completely change to an organic diet. But if you can take anything from today, it's that the necessity is clear. Toxins are everywhere around us, and consuming them daily should never be an option. Going organic is key, ladies and gentlemen, to a healthier body and planet. Thank you.